We begin tonight with James Murray, the director of the Secret Service, who has remained in that position during the Biden administration, even though he was appointed by Donald Trump. The first director of the Secret Service appointed by Donald Trump was actually chosen by John Kelly when Kelly was the Secretary of Homeland Security. The Secret Service is under the jurisdiction of the Department of Homeland Security, and Kelly believed that his friend, a retired Marine Corps general, Randolph Ellis, was the kind of outsider that the Secret Service needed to take a fresh look at the management of the Secret Service, which does much more than just protect the president with its $3 billion budget. The Secret Service duties have always included included policing counterfeit money and now include highly sophisticated investigations of financial crimes involving electronic communications, which makes it all the more ironic, to put it mildly, that the Secret Service has lost the most important electronic communications in the history of the Secret Service. It is simply not at all believable, not even slightly believable, that the Secret Service got rid of the most important text messages in their history because no one there knew that those text messages were important. The breaking news of the night is that the Secret Service employees received not one, not two, but three separate notifications instructing them to preserve communications before an agency-wide technology replacement program went into effect in the weeks after the January 6th attack on the Capitol. NBC News is reporting, quote, the first email about preserving records came on December 9th, 2020 from the Secret Service's Office of Strategic Planning, and the second was in January 2021 from the agency's chief information officer through a Though a senior Secret Service official source didn't provide an exact date, the senior official said employees received a third email on February 4th, 2021, instructing them to preserve all communications specific to January 6th. The emails, quote, included reminders that federal employees have the responsibility to preserve their records and included instructions on how to do so, the senior Secret Service official said. It was James Murray's responsibility to make sure all Secret Service texts sent and received on January 6th were preserved, and he did not do that. Donald Trump never liked John Kelly's choice for Director of Secret Service, Randolph Alice. Director Alice struggled with something no Secret Service director before him ever faced, how to provide full-time Secret Service protection to a huge high-rise building in Midtown Manhattan where the President of the United States claimed that he still lived, but in fact, almost never visited. The Secret Service budget for protecting that building was higher than the cost of protecting any other home of a previous president, and at the same time, the Secret Service budget was skyrocketing to protect Donald Trump on his constant golfing outings locally in Washington and in New Jersey or, and in Florida. Add to that the 18 members of the Trump family who were given Secret Service protection and the protective budget of the Secret Service was quickly wiped out. When USA Today ran a story with the headline, the Secret Service is going broke protecting Trump, Donald Trump blamed the Secret Service director. Donald Trump fired him in April of 2019. In her book about the Secret Service, Zero Fail, The Rise of the Secret Service, uh, The Rise and Fall of the Secret Service, Kara Lenig tells us that James Murray was not Donald Trump's top choice for his next Secret Service director. Trump wanted to promote Tony Ornato, the leader of his personal security detail, <clears throat> to director of the Secret Service. Quote, Trump wanted to make Ornato director, <clears throat> but Ornato said he had other plans and suggested to the president that he hire his good friend, James Murray, a 23-year member of the service. Trump hired Murray after an interview lasting roughly 10 minutes. The president soon after promoted his loyal detail leader, Ornato, to a political role that was unprecedented for the nonpartisan Secret Service. At the president's urging, Ornato took on the job of presidential political advisor as the deputy chief of staff in the Trump White House. 
a 10 minute interview for his new Secret Service director. That interview may well have in included the questions, who did you vote for for president? Who are you going to vote for for president? And do I have your complete and total loyalty at all times for anything I might want to do? This was the third year of the Trump presidency. Remember in the first weeks of his presidency, when Donald Trump brought James Comey into the White House for a one-on-one -on -one dinner, Donald Trump was stunningly blatant about loyalty in a discussion with Comey who he didn't even know and had no reason to trust. Donald Trump made it very clear to James Comey what would be necessary for Comey to continue as FBI director. James Comey tells us that Donald Trump said, I need loyalty, I expect loyalty. Tony Arnato had no doubt certified James Murray's loyalty to Trump before Trump's 10-minute interview with him. But we know that Donald Trump was not going to give that job to anyone who did not clearly pledge loyalty to Donald Trump. So we know that James Murray is a Trump guy in every sense important to Donald Trump or Donald Trump would not have promoted him to director of the Secret Service. In April of 2019, all of the Democratic candidates for president had announced their candidacies, and polling showed Donald Trump running far behind Joe Biden, with Joe Biden at 51 and Donald Trump at 42. Donald Trump knew, just like 2016, there was absolutely no way he was going to win more votes than the, than the Democrat. Donald Trump knew he was going to come in second with the voters, and his only hope was the Electoral College, and this time Donald Trump didn't want to take his chances with the Electoral College. If it came to it, Donald Trump was obviously willing to try to change the outcome of the Electoral College, and that is exactly what he did, and that is what he was still trying to do on January 6th. Cassidy Hutchinson testified that Tony Arnato told her in the White House that Donald Trump tried to go to the Capitol on January 6th to join the attackers of the Capitol. Cassidy, Cassidy Hutchinson testified under oath that Tony Arnato told her that Donald Trump physically struggled with one of the Secret Service agents in the car when he was demanding that the car take him to the Capitol. <clears throat> the Secret Service deleted every text message about that incident in the car and everything else that happened on January 6th, including possible text messages about Vice President Mike Pence. Did Tony Ornato send a text message to Mike Pence's Secret Service agents at the Capitol telling them to take the vice president away from the Capitol. Did James Murray send a text message saying that to the agents at the Capitol to take the vice president away? Were Secret Service agents trying to remove the vice president from the Capitol for his safety, or were they trying to remove the vice president from the Capitol so that the vice president could not certify the electoral college vote. There could be answers to all of those questions in the text messages deleted by the Secret Service, which could not have happened without James Murray's permission. Donald Trump knew that the Secret Service director that he chose in April of 2019 was going to be the Secret Service director on Election Day and was going to be the Secret Service director in the next inauguration day, and that the Secret Service director might be asked to do things that no other Secret Service director in history ever had to do. Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. Whatever the specific words were in Donald Trump's 10-minute interview with James Murray before making him director of the Secret Service, the subtext of it was that line from The Godfather. Someday, and that day may never come, I will call upon you to do a service for me. Did James Murray do a service for Donald Trump by overseeing the deletion of all the Secret Service text messages on January 6th? The January 6th committee can answer all of these questions by issuing a specific personal subpoena to James Murray for his under oath testimony and a separate subpoena to James Murray for all of his Secret Service text messages on January 6th. Today, the Secret Service told the committee that they had found exactly one text that is relevant to the committee's investigation out of the thousands.
more texts that the Secret Service now says were deleted. Deleting those texts is a violation of law. James Murray knew that when he allowed them to be deleted. The Secret Service is one of the most sophisticated cyber operations in the federal government. The Secret Service specializes in investigating financial cyber crimes. The Secret Service knows what its legal obligations are in keeping electronic records, and the Secret Service violated the law. Attorney General Merrick Garland said today that the Justice Department investigation of the attack on the Capitol and the attempt to overturn the election will not hesitate in bringing criminal charges against anyone who they can prove violated the law. The Attorney General stressed no person is above the law. He didn't say Donald Trump's name, but that's what everyone understood that he meant. And that also means that no Secret Service director is above the law. When James Murray is put under oath by the January 6th committee, or possibly by a federal grand jury, he will be asked a long range of questions about the Secret Service electronic records protocols. He will be asked many questions about what happened to the Secret Service text messages on January 6th. And he should also be asked very direct personal questions. How many text messages did you, James Murray, send and receive on your Secret Service phone on January 6th? Who sent you text messages and who did you send text messages to on January 6th? What did those text messages say? The Secret Service sent out a directive to everyone in the Secret Service to preserve all relevant text messages on their phones. Did James Murray follow his own directive or did James Murray personally allow all of the text messages on his Secret Service phone on January 6th to be deleted, or did James Murray do that himself? Did he delete the text messages from his own Secret Service phone? Did the director of the Secret Service personally do that? Is that the service that he did for Donald Trump? James Murray was hoping to slip out of town quietly at the end of the month and start his new career in the high-paid world of corporate security. He is scheduled to begin his new job as the head of security for Snapchat in August. Whoever is handling the preservation of electronic records at Snapchat now is doing a better job of it than James Murray will be able to do. Here's someone who James Murray used to work with. This is one thing and one thing only. This is an attempt to silence conservatives like you and I from communicating before the 2022 election. That's all this is. And it's a message being sent to anyone who supports Donald Trump, either now or in the future, that it's open season on you. It's hunting season for your private communications. So Don't you dare talk about your intentions a or a coordinate can. or do anything to get a Republican elected again, because Liz Cheney will make sure that they subpoena you and make your life really miserable. That's all this was. That guy was a Secret Service agent. Dan Bongino was a New York City police officer who then joined the Secret Service where he worked for 11 years while James Murray and Tony Arnato were also working in the Secret Service. Were they friends with Dan Bongino? Are they friendly with him now? Is Dan Bongino the public voice of what members of the Secret Service, like James Murray, actually think? There is a very serious problem at the Secret Service now. This is the worst crisis facing the Secret Service since the assassination of President Kennedy on November 22nd, 1963, and the director of the Secret Service has not said one word about it, not one word. There has been much justifiable outrage that the chief of the Uvalde Schools Police Force went silent after the mass murder at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. This is the same thing. The director of the Secret Service facing the worst suspicions that have ever been focused on the Secret Service in its history, and the director of the Secret Service, James Murray, says absolutely nothing about it, not one word of explanation, not one word of defense, not one word of a promise to find out what has been happening at the Secret Service. We have never seen a problem like this at the Secret Service. There's a very serious problem at the Secret Service and James Murray is part of that problem or James Murray is 
the problem.